Okay, uh, this is the third demo I expect uh, you guys to do in class right now. We have about 10, 15 minutes. Um, so, because the problem set basically, in the problem set, the entire left ventricle is basically thought of as a bunch of RC circuits put together. And so I thought I'll end with this demo, even though this is a lot simpler than what's there in the problem set, the idea is that at least you'll start thinking about differential equations as RC circuits or RC circuits as differential equations, make that leap, and so then may, hopefully the transition into the problem set would be a little easier. Very simple RC circuit. Um, there's current flowing in the circuit. You've probably all seen this in ENM or something. And so there's just a voltage source, a resistor of one ohm, a capacitor, one farad, and there's some current flowing through the circuit, and VC is the voltage at this node, okay? I want to know through Simulink what are the plots for current and VC as a function of time, and the initial value for VC is zero. And I've also given you the equations describing the circuit, right? V minus VC is equal to IR, right? Just Ohm's law here. And then this is just the equation of a capacitor. You, C is equal to Q over V, where Q is a charge. I just differentiated that, so you get I C dVC over dC. Right? The derivative of Q is I, and the derivative of VC is just dVC over VC. So use these two equations. Do, do these two equations make sense? Everybody? Right? Everybody seen this before? So use these two equations and use the scope to plot the current flowing in the circuit and VC as a function of time. Yes? five to 10 minutes to do that, and then I can go over how to do it. Yeah, so what was not working in this case? This came out, what went on? Go back to your work. So see how sim out is defined? That's what I was doing. So you just work with it. First dimension is the first column is probably a time. Or that values. Because that's the first, and then signals as. Yeah, probably. With column two, oh, zero five. Oh, you have two. Oh, sorry. We'll have to use T out for plot. The two columns here represent the two. The two columns represent the two different points. Are you running it off corn? So, no, the second column, as I was saying, is go to the integrator. We're only seeing one, is that your question? Right click it on. Okay, yeah, so, so, so some versions of. Um, um, I think the one on corn, you're, who's the, you're running it off of corn? Okay, so, okay, some versions of MATLAB, slightly older versions, you'll have for scope, you'll have to right click on it and auto scale to see the plot. There's no auto scale option on the menu. And also, same out may have a different structure to access the data out of it. If you are having the same problem, come talk to me and I can explain that. I'll come back to you. No, that's, so oh, don't, I, 
Yeah, I don't want you to ma model it as an electrical circuit. I want you to model it just exactly as how what we were doing in class using add gain uh, subtract. Yeah, yeah. So don't don't. I just want you to use simple what we've talked about so far to do it. Yeah. Last year did that till like the Sunday before the pump set was due. Yeah, so go to simout now. So, yeah, simout. Simout.signals. The signals. That's got, you were using two initial conditions, right? So each mm -hmm. column corresponds to initial con the data for the pump. But it with T out is your time variable. Does that make sense? Oh, so, so you could, so, so simout.signals.values, yeah. and the first column of that is your first data set, so try and pull. And T out is time. Does that make sense? Try plotting that. If it doesn't work, I'll come help you. Values, and that's a 58 by 2 matrix. So the first column corresponds to the first initial condition, the second column to the second initial condition. T out is the time, corresponding time variable. Okay? Wait, Shamik, you had a question? Did your stuff work with the sim out? No, go, go to some out then. I think you might be having the same problem as the other people. Here, right here, sinks. Okay, if you did, I'll come back to you then. Yeah, Jordan, you had a question? Okay, yeah, we'll talk about that. But try, I mean, try putting in whatever you can. I mean, the heart of it has to be an integration operation somewhere, DVC over DT. So start by putting in the integrator block and saying, okay, it's gonna output VC to me. Where is that VC going to go? It's gonna go into the first equation somewhere, and then you get current out, and then it should all join together. Smart dot signals dot values, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's important to understand this example because the PV loop is just three RC circuits stacked together. So it's important to understand how this basic wiring is working. And Uh, just so your voltage VC should look as if it's going to one over time, and current should be starting at one and decaying to zero. And at T is equal to one second, if you really want to know, voltage value should be about point six. So let's talk about what this model should be. So again, start with the integrator block always, right? So the integrator block in this case is going to output VC to me. It goes into this addition block with one which is doing the V minus VC calculation. Okay? Does that make sense? Everybody with me so far? Just the integrator and the addition block? Those two, look at those two. Does those, do those blocks make sense? Okay, and so you do that, and you then do one over R, so you get current at this point, right? V minus VC divided by R, you get current, and then you do, so you have current I, 
and then I over C is just the derivative. So then I do divide the thing by C, right? And then I should have something that I can feed into the integrator, right? That's all. Does that make sense to everybody? So then I used a mux, so V minus VC over R, that's current, so I take that out, put it, put it on the scope, and then I put out VC on the scope. Everybody follow that? Again, start with the integrator block and then trace your way around. Don't try, there's no, with, with feedback in general, right, there's no idea of like there being a top-down approach. You have to just start somewhere and then you'll, you know, we start with the output of the integrator here and come back to the input later. You just have to start somewhere and because it is like a loop going around. So I know that that's, that's pretty much the most confusing part of setting up things with Finilink is that there's no top-down approach like you have in MATLAB code. But it can let you do things that mat it will be very hard to do in MATLAB code. It's, it should be in the signal routing library, it's called the signal routing library. So I run this and how to scale this. Then, so this is the voltage in purple going up and Yellow is the current going down. So yeah, questions about that? Even if you don't set this up, I really want you to understand this basic circuit. And there are any questions, if you're confused about anything, ask me if the logic doesn't make sense, yeah. Wait, sorry. I think you can so just, I, yeah. This is expanding the size of it. Number of inputs. Oh, great. You could also add as many scopes as you want. I mean, the idea of this is sort of like electrical engineering. I don't know when, you have a, you have a circuits class, right? At some point you can make circuits. Not really, okay, but generally in electrical engineering when you make a circuit, you just take the oscilloscope and put it everywhere to see what's going on and that's, that's sort of the intuition of building. 